There's a big cover-up going on right now, and I'm not talking politics. I'm talking about something that needs to take place in a world that we have been covering up for years in our own individual lives, those things that we've been covering up that need to be exposed. And what I'm talking about here is to expose that which has been hiding within our hearts and our lives for so long. What is it? I'm talking about the divine light. I'm talking about the light of God, the spark of the divine within each and every one of us. That our job is to uncover God, to expose that divinity within us. Now we know Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is within, not without. So when we awaken to this understanding that God, the divine presence dwells within, the realm of God is within our hearts and our lives. Our sincere journey is to expose, to reveal God in all ways. To reveal God, to see God in one another, to see God within our own selves, to see God in every experience, everything and anything that's going on that we might uncover the divinity, uncover the power, uncover the light, uncover the very presence of God. It's been covered up by fear, doubt, unworthiness, our belief in the appearances of the world around us. That has been that covering that has come on years and years upon us, almost creating a shell. Now, this isn't new. For the ancients all through time have talked about a covering, a hindering uh, place or presence that would somehow diminish the power of your individual light. So we know as we've studied ancient Kabbalah in some of our classes, a precursor to the teaching of Jesus, understanding the mystical Judaism uh, that was there and present at the time of Jesus, there were the wonderful teachings of something that's called the klepat or the husk or a covering that would come of us that would hinder the very spark of the divine within our own individual lives. We welcomed it as we listened to the stories of fear that imparted in our world conversations around us and we start to embrace fear. We welcomed it and it became a covering for us, covering over the light on the illumination of the divine when we welcomed doubt and questioning and wondering. Fear that says I'm not sure. Lack that says I just don't have. It's not possible for me. It's not there for me. In each way, all of this has hindered the awareness of the good. For what do we say? God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. All the time. All right, so God is the goodness. God is the good. The good is God. What we're doing is wanting to uncover the good within us. We've been taught, cover it up. Don't talk about your goodness. Maybe that's your ego. That's too much of your pride. But we're called to let our light so shine before the world that they may see your good works and bring glory unto God. We sang that opening song today. We are a city on a hill. We are that light that cannot be hidden. That's our passion. That's our calling. That's our mission. That's who we are as children of God. Not just for this congregation. We don't own that alone. It's for the world to awaken to this understanding that when we discover the good within us, We radiate, that's right. We illuminate, that's correct. We shine in wonderful ways. And they see the glory of God, the goodness of God, the power of God at work within our individual lives. For God is the all good. You see, God is not sick. God is not poor. God is not unhappy. God is never afraid. And God is within. Yet somehow we who are the embodiment of God, we who are the children of God, we who are the revelation of God, we who are the ones who are showing to the world the very character and essence of God, have covered and clothed ourselves in a consciousness or a thinking that says, I'm poor. We've covered up the light with a thought process that says, I lack, I don't have. We've dressed ourselves in a covering a clay pot, a husk, a shell that's diminished our light when we say, I'm afraid, I'm alone. We've forgotten all the wonderful essence of divinity within, the spark of the divine. You were created in this wonderful essence of understanding the good unflowing with, uh, unfolding within you, ever within you. When's the last time you heard someone say, you're good, you're really good? Turn to someone and say that right now. You're good, you're really good. 
You see, that's the beginning of uncovering, saying, because you're good, I see the good in you. I see the God in you. I see the greatness within you. I see the possibilities within you. I see the potential within you. It's all there when we begin to call out and uncover the God within us. We're removing these husks, this shell, this covering, as we begin to embrace this premise that God is perfect and perfection dwells within us. That may be a contrary to anything that you have grown up with because we may have been taught theologically, you are born a sinner. You are full of sin and shame. You are something that is totally unworthy. You are a less than creature and that you are hopefully trying to reach out and find a little tidbit of God's grace and mercy. And you're crying constantly for this, have mercy upon me, oh, punishing God who is ready to send lightning bolts from heaven on high on us. And that may be a little illustration of how we think. We've not been told. We've not seen the message of the scriptures that has echoed down through the ages of the goodness of God, that you are created in the likeness and the image, the likeness, wow. The likeness, you are the reflection of the divine. You are that. So if God is good all the time, you're good all the time. Oh, you say, I can't be good all the time because there's some times when I know I haven't been so good. But it's when we awaken to this and cover the goodness within, uncover it and say, yes, there is good in every circumstance, in every scenario, in everything I do, in every day I live, in every breath I take, there is good because the good dwells within me. I am the likeness. I am the image of the divine. I am the image of the all good. And people begin to awaken to that. Now, it's really important that we've captured that vision of who we are for ourselves and that we begin to share that vision and seeing it in one another around us. For in that then we awaken to understanding that the perfect God, that which is all perfection, that which is all good every moment is dwelling within you and you are that reflection of it, that you are that perfect being, that you have this amazing potential I don't know that you realize your highest and best awaits you for you to awaken to your amazing potential. That was the challenge you see for the disciples and followers of Jesus because they had all grown up in a Hebrew school as little boys. Those young men had all gone to Hebrew school with the goal of hopefully becoming a rabbi. Their mother, their father hoped one day Oh, Charles, I hope you'll grow up to be a rabbi. Oh, Jay, I hope one day you'll achieve that. You're going to go to school. You're going to study. You're going to be a rabbi. And at a certain age of 12, graduation day, teacher instructor said, maybe being a rabbi is not your calling. Maybe that isn't your gift. So many young Hebrew boys went on to be tax collectors, tending nets, fishermen, working in shops, doing other professions, although they had this wonderful knowledge and understanding of scriptures, it may not have been their forte to be that rabbi or that great teacher in Jewish tradition. All of a sudden on the scene comes Jesus, who's encountering these young men who are tending nets and fishermen and tax collectors and says, I see your potential. I see the good. I'm calling you out to be a disciple, a student, to be a rabbi, a great teacher yourself. I see the good in you. You see, that story unfolds the very essence of the divine that's constantly looking and saying, I want you to uncover your potential. It's been covered up. It's been covered up in your thoughts, in your minds. It's cloud over with saying, I'm not all that great. I'm not all that wonderful. I have shortcomings. I have failed. Oh, we all do but we awaken to deep within us something powerful, something that there is our highest and best, our potential, our divine heritage, that which you were gifted with as the child of God, as the son and daughter of God. As we awaken to this, you understand this is your divine heritage. It's setting your mind free from the bondages that fear, lack, a, uh, a sense of being all alone, all these things and attributes that we have a negative connotation to us that are holding us back, we're set free from that. We're liberated from it. 
We're set free with a new concept of God, the divinity within us. For we need to incorporate a conscious recognition that health has always been ours, abundance has always been ours, peace, happiness has always been ours, and they're yours right now, right now. They're therefore the, the very uh, essence within us is there, and it's there for us to claim, to see, to acknowledge, to begin to look in and say, I see good, I see God, I see the divine, I see the blessings, I see the abundance, I see it all within me, ready to unfold in dynamic ways. How powerful that is when we begin to uncover what's deep within and begin to allow it to be revealed. For this world is an upside down world that we live in. That we're living in this world of error in life, missing the mark, that which is creating evil, shall we say, a powerless place in our lives. It's turning everything upside down and what it is is the inversion, the inversion of the eternal good. Because we begin to think, you know what, we're bad. No, you're good. No, we're bad. No, you're good. We begin to turn it all upside down. We begin to say, I live in a world of lack. No, you live in a world of abundance. Well, we say, I don't see the abundance. I don't necessarily feel the love. I don't see it in these tangible ways in front of me. I don't get to grasp and touch out to these things because here's the challenge. It's what we've been holding in mind, in thought and how we visualize and see our world. For every problem is primarily a mental issue. We think it's a problem. Every scenario, your lack, your disease, your illness, your loneliness, your challenges that you may face that you bring up that want to cover over all this awareness of good within you, you have embraced that to a level and you hold it in mind. Now, we say this, Things that you hold in mind, what? Good students produce after their own kind. The challenge we have is you hold it in mind. That's right. And some of us not only hold it, we caress it. We stroke it, we love it. Oh, poor me. I'm just full of lack. I'm sick, got lots of problems. Oh, that, let me just hold that a little bit more. We hold on to it, we caress it, we love it, we embrace all this in a sense of victimhood and we're not seeing our divinity, we're not seeing our good, we're not awakening to our highest and best and so we're living in this upside world as we hold on to these things for the answer to all of the problems is found in the spiritual realization that there is no problem. Wow. What if we awakened to that wonderful truth? There is no problem. There is no problem. In the divine world of all good, of the divine world of God, in the kingdom of God, in the realm of God, in the presence of God, whatever term you want to use, there is no problem. But we've covered up that truth with a belief and system that says that we hold on to. It says, oh, there's problems. Mm-hmm, pastor, we've got problems. Oh, yeah, you just don't know all the problems. Nobody's known the trouble I've seen. We sing it on, oh, why me, Lord? Why? We got some theme songs, don't we? We like to sing over and over again. The problems are simply our blessings covered. Our blessings are there. We see them as problems because it's all covered with fear. Your blessing is there. Your health is there. Your wellness is there. Your uh, abundance, your prosperity is already there in the divine realm of God. But we've covered it up and we can't see all of the beauty that's there. Robert and I moved into a new home a year ago. We came out to the backyard that had not been tended for quite some time. Grass, weeds, all this kind of stuff. We said, whoa, we've got some challenges here to turn this into a landscaped beauty, a wonderful healing garden, a place of meditation, a place where we could really relax. There was one bush and lots of weeds. Suddenly we began to clear out the way. Wow, it was amazing what we found. Lots of beer cans, <laughs> lots, of, <laughs> lots of trash, uh, telling a little bit the story of the neighborhood. I even found a little angel, a little cement angel buried in there. And it's just the cutest little cherub. I put it on our front steps and all of our neighbors says, I love that little angel that says, something's watching over us. I said, that's a beautiful metaphor. 
we discovered that angel in our backyard. Here's the thing. As we began to pull away the weeds, mow the grass, we discovered there was a wonderful terrace wall of boulders. There are probably a row of, I'm going to say, 50 to 60 big, gigantic boulders that created almost a, a terraced wall or different level. Hidden. No one knew they were there. Hidden by the weeds, covered up. And people came by and said, oh, wow, when did you do all the time to, remove, to have all those boulders brought in and all this, you know, this wonderful landscaping that, you know, where, I said, it was there all along, just covered. I want to tell you this, that the presence of God is the all good, and it's there all along. But what have we covered it with? Fear, doubt. What happens is that in true prayer, we begin to see uh, that... Uh, we want to refuse any apparent conditions or the appearances that we see. For true prayer is just this, illustrated over and over again in Scripture, that communion with God is this wonderful thing that's going to happen in your life that it begins to uh, refuse to see these current conditions. Where do we see it? Let's look at several Bible stories that unfold for us exactly this lesson for our journey. Jesus is at the wedding of Cana. And what happens in this wonderful celebration, they've run out of wine. A tradition of great celebration always requires the juice of abundance. Wine symbolizing great abundance and wealth. Every celebration required that it flow freely, that there be abundance for days of celebration at this wedding. And how embarrassing for the host that there's no more wine. Jesus isn't looking at the scenario and the circumstances as they appear before him and say, I'm sorry, I haven't got time to squish some grapes and stomp some grapes and make some juice and put it in a barrel and let it ferment for a couple of years and, and then uncork it and serve it. Jesus, I don't care about the, the current conditions. I refuse, I refuse to see the, the apparent condition and said, let's make wine. Wow. Can you imagine if we all woke up today and said, let's make wine? And I mean that in wonderful ways. It says, let's create blessings. Let's unfold the good. I don't care what the conditions are. I don't care what the world around me. I don't care about the physical things that I may see. I'm going to say, let's make wine today. I refuse. Now, uh, in my own personal life this past week, you know, we faced some challenges, uh, you know, financially. And I was saying, I refuse to act and believe and live in any way that says I am not in abundance. And Robert said, well, 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 can we go out to eat? Can we do this? Can we do it? Of course we can. We're living in this wonderful abundance because we refuse to look at these somehow apparent conditions that would say somehow we're living in lack. Now, with good wisdom, we just said, no, we're not going to welcome any kind of feeling, anything other than we're living in a wonderful spirit of abundance. I went to the mailbox, bam, unexpected income and a beautiful check. I'm like, whoa, where did this come from? I said, because we're living in the spirit of abundance, our consciousness, our mind is exposing that God has said, I'm good all the time, all the time I'm good. And when you need me, I'm still good. You know, I didn't forsake you. I didn't leave you. I'm there. Do you understand that? So why are you dressing yourself? Why are you covering up your light? Why are you coming up the spark of the divine? How about you make wine today and refuse to accept the circumstances as being the apparent condition that limits you or locks you in? How about when Jesus was feeding the 5,000? 5,000 says not counting women and children on the hillside. They're all hungry. I don't know about you, but as a mom and a dad, you may have encountered hungry children coming home from school. They want something now. I want to eat now. You could say, wait till dinner. Uh-huh, and they're behind you stealing a cookie. They're doing whatever they can because they want to eat now. Well, can you imagine 5,000 not counting women and children who say, hey, we're hungry. We want to eat now. And the disciples say, just, just let them go. Let them find their own food. Now, Jesus could say, what do you have? And here is a basket with two fish and five loaves. Now, you could look at that apparent condition and say, there ain't no way we're feeding 5,000 hungry men, not counting women and children. 
with this basket. You all be crazy. I know some of you know how to add water to the soup and make something stretch. Uh huh. I know some of you, you know, when the budget gets low in Africa, we called something called Kisuma Wiki. It was push the week. It meant uh, it was that which was like um, collard greens, that you just eat greens to make the week stretch, you know. You all know how to stretch a budget or make things go, you know. You add a little extra rice in your meatloaf to make it stretch or got some filler or you extra flour or whatever it may be to make that meal you know it's more cheese than macaroni or it's more macaroni and less cheese but you made it work for you you know well Jesus needed a pretty big recipe there to make that stretch but he didn't he didn't look at the apparent conditions he just said I am going to break this bread and bless it and share it and lo and behold 12 baskets were left over. How about you break some bread today and bless it? How about you take some circumstances and situations and say, I'm going to break this situation and bless it. And I'm going to share it and see it multiply. Why? Because all the time God is good. God is good all the time. Why have you covered it up? Why have you withheld that? Jesus was faced by lepers who had a disease. The untouchables. People that you don't touch and there was a tradition that when the lepers came, they were required to say, unclean, unclean, stay away from me, stay away. Jesus said, I don't care about your current condition. I don't see that. I refuse to see that. I touch you, I heal you, I bless you right now because the miracle is there. It's within you. You see, if we don't see it, there is no problem. But our problem is we're looking constantly at the problem. We're looking at the physical appearance of everything rather than looking from spiritual eyes to see I can make wine, I can break bread, I can touch a leper, I can do all these things. Why? Because the good that's in me needs to be exposed. I need to let my light so shine before the world that they may see the good works within me, the very working of God at work at all times. Times. Now, it's really important then. What we have to do is declare that kind of truth. Not the physical that we see, the material, but begin to declare this perfection of God. I declare the goodness of God. God is perfect. God is at work right now. All things are possible. All things are possible. Now, if you don't believe that, please do me a favor. I love this. Get a razor blade and cut that out of your Bible. I'd feel so much better that you carried a Bible with you that says that scripture is not there. But it's an ancient truth. It's one that you've got to face up to. All things are possible. There are no problems. It's only when we look at them and name them and call them and speak those as problems that they are problems. But when we declare our truth and what is the very truth that we see the perfection of God and that we see the perfection in ourselves and we see the perfection in one another we declare it and we begin to uncover this great truth with the words that we share and the words that we speak and we turn away from that which appears to be the physical to say I see the spiritual I see really great things in you. I see amazing uh, things unfolding in you. I see wonderful potential in you. I see the good of God in each and every one of you. When you begin to proclaim that and speak that, you declare it. And what happens is you awaken and you stir a belief. Oh, you know what it's like to stir? You know, Robert's a good cook. Sometimes he says to me, would you help in the kitchen? Unbeknownst to his better judgment, he invites me to come in. <laughs> I try to help. He says, would you stir this? Okay. So, you know, I'm stirring and I'm realizing. He says, no, stir deep. Stir deep. Get everything from the bottom because your whole idea of stirring is to get the ingredients from the bottom to get them to mix all the way through. Stirring is not just along the top, you know. It's not just a little spoon around there, you know. It's got a good stir. You know, give it a good stir where you kind of waken everything up and stir it all up. Well, that's what we need to do with our belief. When's the last time you stirred your belief. I'm not talking about a little tickle on the top. I'm not talking a little teaspoon, a little swirl. You know, I, at the royal wedding, they informed everyone when you are an English tea drinker, your teaspoon as you stir your tea never touches the side of the teacup because you never should hear that spoon. So it's a little swirl, little dainty thing, maybe the pinky out. So if you're attending the royal wedding, 
you would know how to be a tea drinker. And ex- I'm going to tell you that you throw the teaspoon away, forget the pinky, get the fist out, get the big old wooden spoon. We're going to stir it all up. Come on. We're going to stir up our faith. We're going to stir up our belief. We're going to hit the sides of the pan. We're going to go down to the bottom. We're going to stir it all up. We're going to pull it all up because that's what it's all about. Really getting that kind of faith that says, I got all the ingredients of all the good that I know that is there in my life and in the circumstances and what I'm seeing right now, I see the, all the good all the time. I am uncovering it. Ooh, isn't it great to be exposed? Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, some of us are like, oh, I'm not comfortable being exposed. But I'm telling you about exposing that incredible goodness within you that they may see your good works and glorify God. How important it is that you speak it out then, that you begin to name it, you speak it out, you give voice to it. You know, Jesus is our great example and constantly showing us how we're called to live our life each and every day. What does Jesus do as he comes to the tomb of Lazarus? Lazarus has been dead. He's been dead there so long that everyone says, oh, don't open up the tomb. He stinks. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. You don't want to go there. Mm-mm. Don't even bother, you know. It's like that, you know, casserole that's been in your Tupperware after you know, six months and you kind of opened up. Ooh, oh, mm, no, no, that's got to go in the trash. We are not going to open that one up. No, we don't want to look at that. It stinks. That's what it was when he came to the tomb. Mary, Martha saying, Jesus, you don't even want to approach this issue. And what does Jesus do but simply speaks the word and says, Lazarus, come forth. Wow. Great declaration. What does that mean for you and me? When we stand at that which looks like it stinks and it's a circumstance of life that we're looking at the physical element that everything has died, our finances have died, our prosperity has died, our relationship has died, our health has died, something's died and it stinks and it's a mess. And when we get to speak and say, I uncover it, I ask that stone to be rolled away and I speak and I call it out, you, health, wellness, abundance, prosperity, come forth. I've stirred it up and I speak it out now that the all good is transpiring in my life right here, right now, in this moment. That's what we're called to live. To declare it in such a powerful way that we speak it and we know that what happens is it dissolves all of the false appearances. I'm going to tell you, there's false appearances around you. False appearances saying that you can't do anything good, nothing blessing, nothing wonderful is going to happen. False appearances say that you're a failure. False appearances say that you're, you know, struggling financially. False appearances, I'm on a fixed income. Oh, that's a false appearance. Honey, there's nothing fixed in God's eyes. Mm -hmm. It is all open and ready to flow. Divine good is always there. Why are we saying and putting out words and speaking words that say I am limited in some shape or form? So here's what I want you to do is to understand that when we open our mind to the all good and uncover the presence of God, that perfection of God at work within us, what happens? It dissolves everything. Now we know like in scripture, scriptural symbolism and the metaphysical understanding of scripture is that thought or water is symbolic of thought or consciousness. You know, what's it like when you pour a little water on some sugar? It dissolves doesn't it how about you pour water on a lot of things and they just melt away boiling hot water hot water that's full of intensity and a lot of good vibration of energy within that hot water it dissolves things so it is when we begin to put our faith our consciousness our knowing our thoughts in such a powerful way that we dissolve the appearance of what we think is going to be our challenge and it dissolves and it melts away Because we have stirred up our faith and we begin to speak that which we know to be true. And we claim and affirm and we speak to that Lazarus in the tomb. We speak to that scenario. We speak to that challenge. We speak to that problem. Say, I already see the perfection. I already see the good. Come out. Come out. Because I'm making wine today. I'm I'm breaking bread and I'm blessing it. I'm healing lepers. I'm doing all this with my consciousness, my awareness of the divine good in my life how important this is in our life so I want to challenge you today to uncover because there has been a big cover up going on in our lives we've covered up all the goodness of God we've covered up in mind and thought 
and layer after layer put on in our thinking and our process that says it's difficult, it's possible, it's, it's challenging, it's not going to work for me, it's not there for me. Oh, you know, you know the words, you know what's going on in your head, you already know the voice that's speaking to you that has been covering up the perfection of God, covering up you, the image of that perfection of God, covering up the blessings and the unfolding of that perfection of God. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge God, and God is promising to direct your paths. How powerful this is when we begin to uncover these truths, uncover the beauty of these promises at work for you in your life that says, I just simply trust. The physical looks like this, and the spiritual looks like that. The physical says there's no wine at the wedding. The spiritual says there's an abundance of wine at the wedding. The spiritual says these two loaves, these little, or these few loaves and two fishes are not going to feed 5,000. The spiritual says they've done it and there's 12 left over. The spiritual may look at that leper where you from the physical have said, I can't touch it. Don't touch it, don't touch it, don't touch it. And the spiritual says, I'm touching it all over. I am healing it. I am releasing it. I am working on it. I am revealing its perfection. And this is our journey. How powerful it is for today is the day to do some uncovering, to uncover the truth of God at work in your life. Amen.